Hello, everyone. Welcome. As you guys are um, getting into this webinar, we'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. Um, All right, hello everyone, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining the first webinar of the Giving Tuesday 2002 giving season, planning your Giving Tuesday campaign. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Lisa Galperin. I am the Senior Community Engagement Manager here on Mighty Cause. Uh, today we're going to be going over a little bit about Mighty Cause first, and then we'll be going over how to plan your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, feel free to utilize the chat in the Zoom webinar panel uh, to throw out ideas, introduce yourself, um, et cetera. But we'll be going over any questions at the end of the webinar. So a little bit about Mighty Cause for those of you who are new to Mighty Cause. Uh, we are a year-round fundraising platform for organizations. We've been in the nonprofit space for quite some time since 2006. We were previously named Razoo. Uh, we're actually one of the largest giving day technology providers in the country. We provide the technology for several statewide and regional giving days. So we're really familiar with giving days and giving Tuesday. We have created our platform and continuously grow our platform to try to create a, an environment where organizations can easy, easily and seamlessly fundraise and reach their fundraising goals and engage with their donors and their supporters and their network. Um, we've built a platform that has a lot of different tools such as peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, matching grants and integrations with Salesforce or MailChimp or Zapier to make your life easier. Our goal is to help you guys reach your fundraising goal and that's what we're here for. So just a little bit about Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause in particular. So Giving Tuesday this year is on November 29th. I always remember it because Tuesday after Thanksgiving, it is a 27 hour fundraising event. We start at midnight Eastern Standard Time and we go until midnight of Pacific Standard Time the next day. So it's 27 hours that you have. We provide a toolkit with templates, checklists, a planning timeline, a full schedule of different other training sessions that we will have. Again, we our goal is to try to make uh, your fundraising as easy and seamless as it can be. Registration for uh, our Giving Tuesday event will be on Thursday, July 21st. And you can do so um, on givingtuesday.mightycause.com again next week, Thursday, July 21st. And there are a lot of different ways to participate in Giving Tuesday. Uh, joining Mighty Cause on Giving Tuesday is one way that you can join the global movement. And just to go over our agenda for today, uh, we'll be first going over why Giving Tuesday, why should you participate in Giving Tuesday? We'll look back at 2021, just some insights and things to take away from last year, how to build your roadmap, different strategies, how to spread the word on your campaign and how to then close the loop on it. As I mentioned, 
Uh, there is a Q&A questions box. Feel, please feel free to put your questions in there for at the end, we'll go through them all. I see a lot of people um, in the chat introducing themselves. That's awesome. So glad to see everyone. So excited to see we have so many people from a lot of different states. Welcome and let's get started. All right, so why Giving Tuesday? If it's your first year participating or if it's your fifth year, it's always good to understand why is Giving Tuesday worth your energy and your time to participate in? Well, Giving Tuesday started back in 2012 and it just started off as a day to give back. It was a day to counteract all of the spending associated with Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But what's happened over these past 10 years, because this year is the 10th anniversary of Giving Tuesday, is that it's become a global movement of giving back and supporting nonprofits. It's one of the highest volume days of charitable giving. So it's a huge engagement opportunity. It's an opportunity to be part of not only um, a conversation within the US, but a global conversation. Um, and as well, it's a really great opportunity to start building your messaging for year end and for 2023. So let's look back at 2021 and to see what we can learn from 2021 for our 2022 campaign. So this is from Giving Tuesday Data Commons from scarcity to abundance, mapping the giving ecosystem. This is some lessons they took from the research and data that organizations reported to them. So what they found was that top line dollars overall increased in 2021, but donations decreased. As we all know, in 2020, there was a huge spike in donations um, because of everything that was happening in the world. People wanted to support organizations more than ever. And last year, although donations increased, um, the donations decreased because it went back to where it was previous to 2020. And as well, smaller donors actually donated less last year than the year prior. But what they were able to see is there was an increase in monthly donors, which according to MNR benchmarks, there was a 24% growth in monthly recurring revenue for organizations from mon monthly donors. Overall, total giving to small organizations grew by over 15%. For large organizations, total giving did not grow as much, but donors uh, that specifically gave to pandemic-related causes in 2020, they actually started giving back to non-pandemic-related causes like the arts and animals in 2021. So what can we take away from all of that information about 2021? Well. First, don't write off small donors. As I mentioned, there was a drop off in small donors in 2021 from 2020. They were partly responsible for the unprecedented growth in 2020. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to your small donors um, and you are reaching out and making sure that they're included in your communication and you're reaching out to them. Some other things that actually Giving Tuesday found from their research was that um, non-monetary giving increased last year um, a lot. So what they found was that uh, because of 2020, people were not able to volunteer, but that didn't stop people from being interested in volunteering in 2021 when things started opening back up. Um, that can be donating items, that can be donating your time. People want to be involved in your organization and not just a monetary way. So think about what non-monetary uh, goals that you may have and how you can or, or how you can engage with your supporters in that way. And also something that they learned was that a lot of donors were really focused on causes versus specific organizations. They were really interested in supporting a specific mission rather than a specific organization. So as you think about your Giving Tuesday campaign, think about how you can um, language that and how you can really push your mission and your cause um, to your donors, um, what they are supporting, what are you trying to solve? And we'll get into that in a second though. So, building your roadmap, getting ready to plan out your Giving Tuesday campaign. Well, let's start at the beginning. 
you first want to think about what are your priorities as an organization. Um, in this webinar, we probably have a wide variety of organizations, some that are large, some that are small, some that have a whole team, some that are one person. So think about what are the things that you want to accomplish this year. Look at your donation data. If you've utilized Mighty Cause um, and the platform previously, you can look at your overview view or your donation report to look at your analytics to see um, you know, how many donations you've received, any recurring donors, et cetera. If you haven't before, you can use your own system to review that. And think about some development priorities, such as donor retention, donor acquisition, recurring giving, engaging partnerships. Review all of that and think about what do you want to accomplish for this Giving Tuesday. If you haven't received feedback from your staff, definitely recommend doing so and scheduling a meeting and talking through what they think is top priority for your give, uh, Giving Tuesday campaign. And as well, consider providing a donor survey. Um, you can do so also after Giving Tuesday, but before Giving Tuesday, you can um, reach out to your donors to see what's the best way that they engage. What is, what is the best way? Where are they most getting information about your nonprofit, et cetera. All right, so once you've kind of determined what are your key priorities, you then want to put that as a goal. So how much are you looking to raise for Giving Tuesday in 2022? If you're not sure, you may wanna consider speaking with your treasurer or your board to determine what is the best goal for your organization. Again, a goal, it can be as small or as large as for your nonprofit. Um, you know, it can be $500 or 5,000. You want it to be something that is attainable and realistic for your nonprofit. So think about, you know, how much will you need to raise a day or a week before Giving Tuesday to stay on track of your goal? As I mentioned, look at your data from last year, if you have that, to think about what is realistic and what's not realistic. And consider, as I mentioned also previously, setting non-monetary goals for Giving Tuesday. You know, your goal doesn't just have to be, we need to raise X amount of dollars on Giving Tuesday. It could be, we wanna increase our followers. We wanna increase the amount of first time donors we have or the amount of returning donors we have, or maybe the amount of people that, you know, we wanna have more likes or more social engagement or more people opening up our emails. They don't necessarily have to be non-monetary goals. You wanna make sure to set goals that are a priority for you. And as we go through this webinar, you'll see why it's really important to have a really clear understanding as to what is essential for your, non for your nonprofit, because that is really helpful in communicating that to your network. So as you are thinking about your goals and your priorities, you want to think about a focus for your campaign. What are you fundraising for? Um, as we saw in the insights from Giving Tuesday, a lot of donors want to connect with a specific cause. So what is your cause? What are you, what do you need, you know, financial support for? How will your campaign stand out among the crowd? And that kind of relates to what are you fundraising for? What are you exactly, what problem are you exactly solving? As we get into later in this webinar, we'll talk about content planning and creating testimonials and video and photos to support the specific focus that you have and how you can tie this into your communication. Overall, some things that we've learned about great Giving Tuesday campaigns is one, rev relevance, why your work matters in the current moment. Uh, why is it important for a donor to donate to your specific nonprofit? Authenticity examples of challenge of the challenge and how you're responding again kind of ties into relevance what is the overall problem that your nonprofit is solving for and what is the solution that you are bringing to the table why is it important why is it important for donors to make their donation to your organization urgency we can't do it without you Giving Tuesday is a global giving day donors are going to be inundated with not only um, appeals from other organizations, but also from other businesses because it's Black Friday and Cyber Monday season. So why is it urgent for them to give to your cause on Giving Tuesday? And creativity. 
standing out to show your unique value. Um, how can you tell your story specifically, you know, specialized to you? So after you've thought about the overall focus of your campaign, where you're heading, you want to build a timeline for your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, so we have a checklist on our blog and it will also be available in our toolkit that you can help follow, that you can help track your progress. In your timeline, you should set benchmarks for some of the goals that you've created and put in place. If you have a team, assign them different roles. If you are a one-man show, this is also a great opportunity to look for volunteers. Consider uh, platforms like volunteermatch.org, and you can have different roles and responsibilities for many people. One person can be in charge of emails. One person can be in charge of social. There are always people that you can give a small task or help with. Um, this is Giving Tuesday can be a lot to take on. So definitely reach out and ask for help um, and divide and conquer together. And when you have um, a team in place, um, having a calendar where you can divvy up tasks will make your life easier. And you can set up then biweekly um, or monthly check-ins to check with your team to stay coordinated and organized um, so that you are ready for Giving Tuesday. All right, so now that we've talked about building your overall rolled roadmap for Giving Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about some key strategic elements to consider um, utilizing for Giving Tuesday. So one of them being matching grants. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with matching grants, a matching grant is a basically a marketing tool, a donation incentive, where you are leveraging um, donors the opportunity to double their money and make their donation go farther by having their donation matched. Um, so it's a great opportunity for donors to feel the impact of their donation. Um, matching grants are typically acquired prior to the event so that you can have it ready for the event and you can include it also in your communications to donors that there is a match available for your organization. Matches are also a great uh, strategic tool in meeting your fundraising goals. If it's, you know, you can, we'll get into in a second, different match types, um, depending on what your fundraising goals are. Maybe it's you want to increase total donors or turn out total do dollars because it is such a motivator for donors. Um, it's a really helpful tool to help meet those goals. All right, so there are a lot of different types of matches that are available. The most common type of match is one-to-one, -one, which means that as an example, if I give $5, my donation is actually $10 because my $5 is matched dollar for dollar. So it's really like a $10 donation. So that is the most common type of match. However, on Mighty Cause, there are different types of matches that you can utilize. So for example, also a percentage match. Maybe it's not dollar for dollar, maybe it's 50% or 200%. Um, again, depending on the agreement you have with your grantor, you can have that type of match if you want. Uh, and a cumulative threshold match. So these are matches, these are donations are only matched when you meet a fundraising goal. So we have three types of cumulative threshold matches. So one is a dollar amount, meaning that um, you only receive the full match when you reach your goal. So if your match is $1,000, it's only matched by $1,000 if you reach $1,000. Um, there's also quantity of donations and number of don donors. So for example, if you reach 50 donations, then you receive your match of $1,000. Or if you reach 50 donors, uh, you then receive a match of $1,000. And just to also clarify the, dis the distinction between the two, donations would be if Joe Smith donates three times, that's three different donations. But for donors, it would just be unique donors. So if Joe Smith donates three times, he's just considered one unique donor. So those are all different types of matches that we have available on the platform. So as you see, depending on what your goals are, they can be really helpful in meeting your goals. So when we talk about communicating to donors, um, and your su 
your network um, on Giving Tuesday. For example, if your goal is we're trying to reach 50 donors on Giving Tuesday, um, having a matching grant that ma that is matched when you receive donors, you can then you know relay that to donors on the day. We're close to that amount. We're you know if we receive our 50th donor, we'll receive a thousand dollars, etc. So why, again, would is matching grants really beneficial for donor engagement? And as I mentioned, um, especially with Cyber Monday, Black Friday, donors are going to be inundated with communication surrounding having a deal, getting a discount, et cetera. So it's a valuable offer that donors are receiving for maximizing their dollar and their impact. If they know on today, if I make a donation, it's going to make a larger impact for this organization than I'm going to give. Or maybe I was already planning to give, but I'm going to give an even larger amount because it's going to make a larger impact. For a grantor, it works in the same sense. They know that their donation, even if it's large, is making a larger impact. Their $1,000 donation is actually essentially $2,000 for the organization. And it's also a different way that a if you're working with a major donor or a sponsor, it's a different way that they can participate and um, work with your nonprofit um, than before. And as we talk about sponsors, um, if you are interested in reaching out to local businesses in your area, um, and you haven't done so before, this is a really great opportunity to break the ice with maybe new businesses in your area or prospective vendors. Um, it's a great opportunity to, um, you know, ask a way for them to um, support your organization. And this isn't only just beneficial for you, this is also an opportunity for them. Um, many businesses and organ, um, are interested in supporting an organization. Um, so you can put their logo in your emails, on your website. Um, it will, you can put that, put it on your matching grant actually, so that their logo is listed there. This is an opportunity for also for them to engage your community, your overall community, um, and to share that they are supporting your organization. And it's more beneficial than just writing a check to your nonprofit. Um, they're also getting free marketing from it as well. So how to secure a matching grant. There's really three key steps in to how to secure a matching grant. The first is prospecting who could provide a matching grant. So think of a list of people that you could potentially reach out to. And I encourage you to think outside the box. Um, some people think that it just has to be one specific large donor and that a matching grant has to be a huge amount when that is not the case. Um, I have seen actually a lot of time where board mem members come together and they pool money together to uh, offer a match for Giving Tuesday. Um, it can be a local business or a sponsor, um, but it can be a group of people together coming together and offering um, a matching grant. Once you've thought about different individuals who would be uh, you know, really good candidates for a matching grant, um, reach out to them personally and touch base with them and ask them, um, if it's possible, if they would be interested in providing a match. Um, let them know about Giving Tuesday and everything that we've talked about, how it's such a global movement, it's a huge day and an important day for nonprofits. And they may not be familiar with matching grants, so you may need to break down exactly what is a matching grant, why it's helpful and beneficial for your nonprofit, and also, again, why it's going to make such a, an impact and why their donation is going to go even farther with a match. We'll be having another webinar specifically on matching grants, um, where we'll break down even matching grants further in detail and how to add a matching grant on the platform as well. So another strategy that is really common and popular on Giving Tuesday is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is essentially the idea of having supporters 
in your network fundraise on behalf of your organization. So they are reaching out to they, their social network, their coworkers, their friends and family, and they are collecting donations on behalf of your organization. A very common type of you know, popularized peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is a birthday fundraiser where someone creates a fundraiser for your organization on their birthday. Um, that's an example of a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Um, and the reason why they're so um, popular and beneficial is that it's a network of donors that you wouldn't have been able to reach previously um, that is supporting your organization. But why would supporters be interested in participating in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, campaign? Well, it's a different way that people can um, engage with your nonprofit. Um, it's a non-monetary ask that you are asking of someone. Um, so it's not just asking someone to give, it's asking them to participate in a different way. And a lot of times peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can be fun. Um, a lot of organizations use it as a challenge. They offer prizes to winners. Um, again, can be small. You can make it as small as or large as you want. Um, what's really common on Giving Tuesday are board challenges. Um, so board members will come together. They'll all have their own fundraising page and you can make it non-competitive or competitive, um, but that is a very common type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising challenge that I've seen on Giving Tuesday. And it's also an opportunity for people to tell their story about why their work is important to them. So for example, in the board members challenge, it's an opportunity for them to share with their friends and family, why do they spend time with your nonprofit? Why is your nonprofit important for them? Why is your work something that they are invested in? Um, so it's an opportunity for them to share that story. So speaking of board members, every year we always get the common question of how do I involve my board members? I really want to have them participate in Giving Tuesday. I'm not sure how to get them involved. Well, first review their progress toward any yearly commitments, see what is necessary, if there are any commitments that board members are required to do um, to figure out what, is, what are the best roles for them to have for your Giving Tuesday campaign. And there are so many different ways that your board can be involved with your Giving Tuesday campaign. We have already mentioned two, which is either one board member or all of your board members can come together and offer a matching grant, or they can participate in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. If that is a hard ask for your board members, maybe it's as simple as providing them an email template and asking them to send out an email to all of their personal contacts about your Giving Tuesday campaign and sharing it on their social media, um, adding a flyer to their, or their workspace, um, to local libraries, et cetera. You can also ask them to host a Giving Tuesday event. Um, they could host something at their house or a local business. And it also could be something as simple as supporting your executive director or your team with contacting major prospects or corporate partners um, to acquire a matching grant or, or major donors, etc. So now that we've talked about some key fundraising strategies, we're going to be talking about some communication strategies and spreading the word about your Giving Tuesday campaign. So there are many ways to engage with givers on Giving Tuesday outside of your fundraising page and just your email. So um, you can have a live stream on social media or a live event, as I just mentioned, with your board members. You can run a contest. Um, one of my favorite examples was an organization who ran a t-shirt competition where uh, they had people in their community. Um, from all ages, uh, submit designs, and um, the winning design would be featured on a t-shirt that would be sold. And to vote for the different designs, uh, individuals had to make a donation. And while they made a donation, they voted for the, the design that they liked the most. Um, and so that's a really great example of how you can have a fun interactive um, event on Giving Tuesday um, that is 
you know, a little bit different and again, creative or outside the box. Um, it can be also acts of kindness, um, a, you know, gratitude drive. There are a lot of different opportunities of how you can engage with um, your donors or your network on Giving Tuesday outside of your organization page. Um, so when you're thinking about your content and after you've kind of thought through all of the strategies you're going to use, um, you're going to have to think about um, the appeals that you are going to be sending out leading up and on Giving Tuesday. So just some suggested content, one being the actual story on your fundraising page. Um, so choose maybe a theme that you can approach in different angles so that you can use it over the span of two weeks. Um, one example that I've seen before was an animal organization that told the story of um, a panda that they were rehabilitating. And they told that over the span of a couple of different emails and, uh, that they were sending out to um, their donors. Um, so video as well. Um, if you are on social media, you may see, have seen that Instagram and Facebook in particular really push video over photos now, especially short uh, videos um, in particular. They really drive that actually to people on those platforms. Um, so think about putting together a small video. It does not have to be professional, especially um, with the craze of TikTok. Um, it does not have to be a professional video that a videographer or professional editor put together. It can be as simple as maybe a quick video of all of your board members or your volunteers saying why they're supporting your nonprofit today, or what is their, what is one word that they think of that they associate your nonprofit with. Um, it can be really simple and easy. And on Instagram, it's actually something that, and, and YouTube as well, you can directly edit on those platforms, or you can use a platform like CapCut that is free on your phone to quickly edit the videos together. Again, does not have to be professional. It can be something that is very quick and easy that you can put together. Images. Um, so when you are Going through all of your content, you want to have a library of key photos that you can use for appeals, emails, social media, um, different edits of images also is really helpful to have. Um, so for example, if you have one image that you have, you're using in your social, in your uh, Instagram, for example, you may want to have um, a version of it for email, like a larger version of it. Unsplash.com is a very popular free resource for free images, um, but as well, uh, Canva is free for nonprofits to have a plan. Uh, Canva also has a library of photos that you can utilize for images for your campaign. And lastly, infographics. Infographics are a really great way to share, again, kind of your cause and what you are solving for. Um, Canva, as I mentioned, is free for nonprofits to utilize if you um, sign up um, with them. And they actually have templates of infographics that you can just plug in your information and then you can share that with your network as well. So something we talked about a little bit is um, keeping it cohesive overall in your messaging. Um, and so one way of keeping it cohesive is write down at bullet points, two to three ideas about the work that you do that you want to present in all of your communications from Giving Tuesday. Again, what is the challenge that you have and what are you solving for? That's kind of a, an idea of to how you can break that down um, and as well the impact a donation will make. Um, if you have a nonprofit um, branding and imagery or colors that you typically utilize, use that, but also um, consider adding in also the Giving Tuesday colors um, or any other distinct color palette that you want to utilize throughout your all of your content. Um, we will, in our nonprofit toolkit, we will have Giving Tuesday logos available there where you can... Um, uh, grab those assets and put them into your content as well. Okay, I think we have some raised hands. I'm going to just save them for the end.
So we'll, we'll go through, we'll answer your questions, but we'll just save them for the end. Uh, so then some last communication quick tips. Uh, when you think about your communication, keep it simple. It can be short and sweet. It doesn't have to be really lengthy. Um, I wouldn't be too overwhelmed about how long, a, you know, if you're sending out a newsletter, how, how long it has to be. Um, again, people are going to be inundated during that time of year. So you really want to keep it simple and stick with really strong words in your, um, in your language and communication. Um, and focus on the channels where your donors are. Um, if your donors are not on Instagram and they only communicate with you on Facebook or they only open up your emails, they don't interact with you on social, work smarter, not harder. Um, unless that is one of your goals is into, to increase Instagram followers or you want to increase, you know, um, your, your, your Facebook um, engagement. Um, but really think about the key areas where your donors are going to be and focus on that. Uh, it's going to be a really, uh, a lot's going to be going on on Giving Tuesday. So plan and schedule ahead of time. Buffer and MailChimp are really great resources uh, to plan and, head, and schedule ahead of time. Um, if you're not familiar with them or you already use an email marketing system, um, but Buffer is a social uh, planning system, so you can add your social feeds on there and schedule ahead of time social posts, MailChimp email marketing system, and those are both free to start with. Um, so you can have up to 2,000 contacts in MailChimp um, for free. So um, definitely consider those if you don't have an email marketing system or you don't have a uh, social, uh, social media manager. And one of the also, also most important things is segmenting your audience. Um, so think about who are the key groups that we want to reach out to. For example, who did not give last year? Or maybe halfway through the day on Giving Tuesday, you want to send an email out to everyone who has donated to you last year but didn't donate to you again this year. Segmenting your audience is very important because you're going to want to um, cater your language specific to those audiences. So for example, for who gave last year, um, you know, make a donation, you know, um, your donation will make an impact again. Um, again, using strong language to kind of reinforce what your overall call to action is. Um, there was actually a professor of marketing at Yale who did uh, research on annual giving campaigns and found that um, when they, when organizations segmented their annual giving campaign uh, between donors who donated, who hadn't donated in over a year and donors who recently donated, they saw an increase in donations when they sent them different communications. Um, so that's why it's really important to make sure that you are sending targeted emails to specific groups. Uh, um, and again, donors who didn't donate um, this year, but donated last year and your recurring donors and major donors, those are some key audiences you want to think about. And lastly, as you're coming together with your Giving Tuesday campaign, one thing you definitely want to also plan ahead of time is your uh, follow up after Giving Tuesday. Uh, because the follow-up is essential into how donors will engage with your organization after Giving Tuesday. Um, because the close, the faster you are to follow up with your donors, the more likely they're going to support your organization in your year-end campaign or any future campaigns that you have. Um, and as well, when you are able to follow up, um, it provides you an opportunity to seg into, you know, what are your 2023 messaging? What are you trying to um, you know, share with donors about your nonprofit or what you have planned in 2023. So after Giving Tuesday, uh, in your content planning, you want to schedule a follow-up email where you thank your donors, share how much you've raised, share any goals that you've met. Again, maybe it's, you know, some non-monetary goals where we were able to receive X new amount of donors. Um, donors want to feel like they helped, uh, you know, accomplish what your 
overall goals were. And again, reinforce how you will be utilizing those funds and how they are making an impact. For any large donors um, or anyone who has helped volunteer, um, phone is always the best way to reach out with them so that you know, maybe in the future they can become a matching grantor um, or you know, participate in your organization in a different way. On social media, you can also plan ahead a thank you graphic. I'm thanking everyone who's participated and helped support your organization. And as well, again, for any volunteers, major donors, anyone special you wanna thank, um, sending them a personal thank you card is always, um, you know, makes an impact with the donors. One thing to keep in mind as you are putting together your Giving Tuesday camp campaign is how it will transition into your end of year campaign. Uh, December is also a large giving season for donors, especially the end of December. Um, so think about how is Giving Tuesday going to blend into your end of year? Or is it going to be, you know, are you going to have the same focus in regards to your content? Or are you doing something completely different? Um, so create a special, you know, communications plan after to your Giving Tuesday donors about your end of year giving season, um, what you have planned, um, what is your overall campaign, etc. All right, so we're coming to the end of our webinar and we'll be going over any questions. Um, registration opens for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause next week, Thursday, July 21st. So please mark your calendars. Early giving opens November 15th. Um, so that is two weeks before Giving Tuesday. And that means that donors can start donating and it will count towards Giving Tuesday. And then Giving Tuesday, November 29th. Um, so definitely mark your calendars with all those dates. We'll also be sending this webinar, the recording and the slide deck and an email afterwards. But I wanna make sure that we get to any questions anyone has. Um, so I'm going to jump into the quick questions. So first question is, what do you mean by appeals? Appeals essentially means, you know, the ask of uh, the call to action, um, you know, asking a donor to make a donation, um, asking them to participate in Giving Tuesday for your organization. Does Mighty Cause uh, get offer campaign matching? Um, I'm not sure what exactly you're referring to. I may need a little bit details about what exactly uh, referring to campaign matching. Um, we do offer uh, the, our matching tool is available on fundraising pages. Um, so I may need a little bit more um, clarity on that. Uh, please spell the names of the nonprofit resources for video campaigns. Yes, I can type that in here. Um, so CapCut uh, is a really great uh, free video editing app you can download on your phone. Um, a lot of people utilize it for social media, actually, for their videos. Um, you can make a lot of honestly really great looking videos just simply on your phone with that and it's completely free. Um, but again, you can also directly edit in Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, wherever you are uploading it on. If you're doing something simple, like you just need to cut, you know, a certain part of a video. Um, how important is Instagram to Giving Tuesday? We don't currently have an Instagram page, but we are considering adding it to our social media. Would you say Instagram is particularly important social media channel? If so, what is the audience versus Facebook and Twitter? So I think the key question about that is to think about what are the demographics of your donors and um, where they are primarily at. Um, so for example, um, if your donors are, you know, particularly on Facebook, um, then, you know, Instagram may not be necessary, but I would say I would recommend creating an Instagram page because it's a really great just visual medium for you to share images or videos about your nonprofit. Um, and honestly, that could be just a really great goal to have for your Giving Tuesday, which is creating an Instagram page and 
um, you know, publishing posts there and see how people, how donors engage with your Instagram account. Um, so I would say, uh, again, it kind of depends on your audience. I would say Instagram skews a little bit younger than Facebook, but, you know, I think a lot more older people are using Instagram now. Um, but it really depends on, um, your, your key donor base. Um, have you seen successful campaigns that focus on recruiting a certain number of monthly recurring donors? So that is, so that is the Giving Tuesday goal is to recruit 50 recurring donors rather than a monetary amount. Um, yeah, I've seen, so on your, uh, on Mighty Cause, on your organization page, um, so there, the, the thermometer will only show a monetary goal to that. However, that doesn't mean that you can, in your communications, share that goal and try to push for that goal. So um, I've definitely seen a monthly recurring goal um, or campaign. Um, it was actually called like a recurring um, or the recurring camp annual campaign. Um, so that is definitely something that you can focus your campaign on if you are trying to push that. Uh, is there a cost for Mighty Cause? So for our Giving Tuesday uh, event, um, it is completely free to register. There are um, pretty standard like transaction fees per donation that donors can cover um, on their checkout flow if they want to, but there is no cost to participate uh, for Giving Tuesday. Is there a cutoff date for registration or is July 21st it? No, so you can, registration will be open and um, probably until maybe October. Um, but so you have some time to register for Giving Tuesday. Um, so it is not, uh, yeah, you don't, it's not just on July 1st, you have some time to register. And it's a pretty quick and easy uh, registration form to complete. Yeah, so uh, will these will you email these slides to us? Yes, they will be emailed to everyone who has registered um, and as well a recording of this will be sent. Um, what are some milestone examples? Um, would you be able to clarify exactly uh, just any specific type of examples that you were specifically looking for? Uh, like campaign benchmarks. Um, so I think, like, were you looking for a specific type of organization and um, what exactly their benchmarks for reaching their goal? Okay, I've just plugged into the chat uh, just to make sure I didn't miss any questions. I'm seeing a lot of people love Canva. Yes, I love Canva. Canva is amazing. And I definitely encourage all nonprofits to sign up, especially since it is free for nonprofits if you register for them. Um, I like to learn more about how the t-shirt design contest was developed and launched my client's effort really fell short um yeah so specifically about the t-shirt t-shirt competition um that was done by an animal organization um so um i believe they already had um a pretty active um like network that was really engaged with them um and they What's really amazing about their campaign was that their designs were submitted by truly people of all ages, like from children to adults. Um, I think what really was um, helpful for their campaign was that they did have a lot of sub art submissions. And I think when you have a lot of art submissions, then people's friends and families, they want to you know, vote for their loved one to win. Um, and then that, uh, that created a lot of engagement. 
And I think because also it wasn't a one-time thing, it was something that they had done um, for a couple of years. It really built, you know, momentum and it was something that people remembered and wanted to participate in the next year. Um, So are there examples of you can share of strong Giving Tuesday campaigns that were made on Mighty Cause and your fundraising platform? If not, can you share some best practices on terms of designing our page? Um, yeah, so, uh, so some best tips about overall designing your page. I think if you th stick to uh, what I shared in regards to kind of focus on two to three ideas, which is what is the overall challenge that you guys are trying to solve for? What is the solution that you guys are bringing to the table and why a donation to your organization would make an impact um, for your organization? Um, I think that adding, I've seen really awesome infographics added to the page that people have made on Canva or elsewhere. Um, I think Images are really great to share um, of, you know, your work and what you do. But again, it does not have to be a long essay. Um, you know, most likely people will skim it. If it is very long, they may not read it in full detail. So you really want to stick on what are the most important points that you want someone to get across in like two to three minutes. Um, and so that's why also images can be helpful together with your text so that it can drive home what exactly you're saying. So it doesn't have to be super long or an essay. Um, and you know, by the time, if they're, if they're going to your page, uh, they're probably already ready to make a, a donation. Um, uh, yes, so just some people asking about the recording. Yes, the recording will be emailed out and sent to, um, and sent out to everyone as well as a copy of the slide deck. Do you recommend in-person events or mainly online? Um, so I've actually seen a hybrid of both. Um, it's actually, well, since 2020, it's been really popular to do a hybrid. Um, I would say that is really just dependent on, again, your network and what is possible and feasible. I think, um, I think in-person events, honestly, there's kind of nothing that really captures that same environment as in-person. Um, but I've also seen some really fun, um, you know, live streams. It can be, you know, maybe like a happy hour event that you do where you invite people on. Um, it could be, you know, uh, I've seen an animal organization have one where people invited their dogs into a Zoom um, and everyone had their dogs in there. So I think it really just depends on what is realistic and feasible. And, um, you know, if, is, is, do you have a venue space that you were able to do it at? Um, I think, you know, those are all a lot of, uh, you know, things to consider when you're debating between online or in-person. Um, and as well, you know, if you do have it in person, you can always have, you know, a, a live stream, um, you know, a phone or a uh, laptop available um, if you, you know, have, if you are a national organization or have people, you know, in other states that or can attend to participate. Um, so when someone donates early during early giving, you mentioned accounts, does that mean fees are waived for all of those donations? So the standard transaction fees um, are still occur. Um, so it would be the same as Giving Tuesday. It's just if they can, you can start having people donate early. Um, you know, it's really great to push people to give on Giving Tuesday, but realistically, you know, some people just will forget on Giving Tuesday or don't have the time, et cetera. So having that two week window just allows people to support your organization for Giving Tuesday. Um, and it will count towards any prizes um, and challenges. Um, and yes, we will have, when registration opens, there will be a toolkit where we will provide um, social media images that you can utilize, logos, et cetera. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, so as I mentioned, registration will open up next week on January 
I mean, I'm sorry, not January, July 21st. Uh, that would be Thanksgiving Tuesday. Uh, so July 21st, so mark your calendars for when registration opens. Um, after this webinar, we will, you will, um, there is a feedback survey. So please let us know what type of webinars will be helpful for you. We are always looking to receive feedback from nonprofits. What do you, you know, what is most important for your nonprofit? What are you interested in learning about, hearing about? So please, um, if possible, if you could fill that out and let us know, that is so helpful for us to take in and see. Um, as well, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team where we will, um, where we will, uh, where we can help answer any questions. Uh, the toolkit will be available next week when registration opens, so you can have access to that next week. Uh, one more question just came in about the toolkit. So yeah, you will have that will be on um, the Giving Tuesday site next week um, when registration opens. Um, and we'll also be sending out an email. So don't worry about, you know, if worried about um, where to go, et cetera, we'll be sending out an email also when registration opens. So you know exactly where to go. Um, all right, well, thank you so much for this webinar. I hope it was really helpful for everyone. And yes, please let us know um, if you have any further questions. And I'm very excited to see what everyone does with their Giving Tuesday campaign and um, have a great day. Thank you.